Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 6.2 integration with Cisco Endpoint AMP. So this is going to be a fairly quick video, but I'm going to show you a little bit more, a little bit on the Endpoint AMP side uh, on top of it. But getting uh, Endpoint AMP integrated with Firepower Management Center is fairly uh, trivial. Um, so you go into the AMP um, section of Firepower Management Center. You have the checkbox. You pick the cloud. You say yes. You get redirected to the uh, Endpoint AMP portal and from there you authorize uh, the device and that's it you know I'd like to say it was uh, you know much more difficult than that um, but it's not um, it's that easy um, now that you have that information uh, between endpoint amp and the events are shared with firepower management center so things like um, you have a threat on an endpoint and maybe um, firepower did not see it it's a retrospective event that, that you know a file came in a few days later we find out it's bad um, it'll actually update the console so I'll show you that in a second um, but here's a little bit extra right I'm gonna show you how quick it is to create a group get the agent deployed and actually um, sending events um, not only to the endpoint portal, right? The portal we're on now, um, but also to Firepower Management Center. So we're going to create a quick group here. I've got some existing policies that we're referencing. We'll save that out. And then from here, what we'll do is go into policies and create a quick policy. Um, again, this is not meant to be a comprehensive overview of Endpoint AMP. It's just to give you an idea on, on how easy the technologies are to integrate. Um, and and leverage and see results fairly quickly. Uh, so I copied an existing policy. There is default policies, even if this was out of the box uh, deployment. Um, I'm going to modify the name here uh, to reference something that's meaningful in this particular scenario. And from here, you know, I could add your custom detection list, you know, blacklisting, white listing, etc. Um, those are already pre-existing uh, objects that have been created. A couple of settings here, you know, send username uh, on events. Um, we want to uh, ensure uh, there's certain elements enabled, maybe a version update if this was an existing uh, deployment when we want to make sure all clients are at the latest version, we can set the, what version to upgrade the uh, client to, um, tell it what date range we want this to take place. Um, and the next policy refresh, it'll get the update and, and, um, and obviously start the uh, update process. Um, file, another thing uh, maybe just to highlight here is uh, we are using quarantine mode in this particular case. Um, so the idea is if the file is bad, we're going to quarantine it. Um, we also have the Tetra in engine uh, enabled for offline detection. So if you're not able to connect to the cloud, um, you still have a, a layer of protection that's taking place. So now that we've created the policy, all we have to do is go into um, the group now and just change that Windows policy to reflect the policy that we just created. So it's pretty, uh, pretty simple. So now we have that policy, we're going to change the Windows policy. And obviously, if there's other um, systems out there that you are interested in, you can make your own custom policies uh, for those as well. Now we'll download the connector. I'm going to throw the connector up on an FTP server um, and then we're going to go to the client and do the installation. And again, this is it, we were already done the integration with Firepower Management Center, right? With the, you know, it takes less than a minute to do the, the full integration. Um, but I'm going a little bit uh, above that because I want to show you the events being triggered. So we'll go through the installation here. And in the installation, it knows what's gr what group it's part of. So that group that we created is part of the installation package. So once it's installed, um, the agent will start and then it'll um, reach back to the cloud. It'll get connected. You'll see reference to that, um, 
um, group uh, and policy that that's enforced on your specific uh, asset or agent. So we're almost done here with the installation. All right, so now we have uh, the agent installed and it's uh, disconnected or showing disconnected. We can see the policy here um, and that was part of the installation, but now we're gonna connect to the cloud and there we go, it's, it's already connected. So again, five minutes out, not only do we have it integrated with Firepower Management Center and Cisco Endpoint AMP, but we've also got an agent deployed on an asset. Now you could deploy that agent in multiple different ways, whether it's scripted, whether it's SCCM, um, uh, whether you wanna publish a URL, for example, or put it in a repository for people to get to, lots of different ways of deploying the agent. But you can see the agent's deployed. Um, it's already shown, in, shown up on the console. Uh, now we're going to grab a couple of files uh, and move them over. And we're not alerting um, on, on this particular setting. So you could have it where it, it, it pops up a message saying threat detected, blah, 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 right? Um, I'm not doing that in this particular instance. So I copied a couple files over. Um, I'm just going to delete them here. Um, and we'll copy over another one and um, try to execute them so nothing's happening here. Um, let's look at the history real quick and we can see that um, we've got a bunch of quarantine events, right? So perfect, it's working as expected, right? Um, but on Firepower, um, so this is going through the next gen firewall, we do not have any malware policies. So there's nothing in play to say to inspect the file, fire, file on next generation firewall and then if you see something, block it. Um, I don't have that in play. Normally you would. Um, I don't have it in play because I want to show you the, the endpoint agent actually functioning. So here we can see that new group, it's red. We go into the inbox. Now we can go into the workflows and start doing the analysis on that particular asset. Um, you know, see the full history of everything that took place, what processes were kicked or invoked or connections made, etc. Again, we're not gonna go through that in this session. Um, but if we look at the console, we can also see the events um, here as well. And if we drill into it, what we're going to see is some of the, that integration, right? Um, and it's going to show us that um, that file event, um, when it happened, we're going to see a, um, a quarantine event update on Firepower Management Center. So, for example, if, if you had an event that took place and your first uh, place to investigate might be the firewall and you're at Firepower Management Center, I don't need to go anywhere else if I have Endpoint AMP. Um, I might need some additional analysis that takes me there, but initially I can see very quickly I've quarantined it. The endpoint agent actually quarantined on it on the asset. So if it came in, um, you know, a few days ago and it was not known as malicious and later it is, I get the update on the console. Um, so again, I don't have to dig any further. And as you can see here, you know, it gives me uh, insight into exactly what took place. And that's it.